can I uh, just say that if you'd said to me 20 years ago, I'd be having breakfast with legend Mark Wright and the man who played bass on Painted Black, I just wouldn't have thought it'd happen. It's just, <laughs> but I did play bass on a few more. I know you did, but well, for me, because I'm, I'm an old punk, but for me, Painted Black is the the best rock song ever. But That's when I played bass pedals on it with my fists. With your fists? Do, do, wow. do, do, yeah. I played bass on it, but there wasn't, wasn't enough sort of bottom, so I went, climbed under the organ and, and, and played the organ pedals with my fists. Well, already, gave it that sound. This is already the best interview I've ever, I've ever been involved with already. It's no, let's do it again, you'll hear. Yeah. Wow. That's what so, it is, and he's thumping on the pedals. How did the man who played bass on the best rock song ever come to be a Palace fan? My dad taught me when I was a little kid. First game, uh, it wasn't the first game, it was the first season after the Second World War. So my dad used to, he lived in Lower Sydenham, and he used to go to Palace before the war, and he used to rave about this footballer they had, called Simpson, mm. who still holds the, 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 the most yeah. goals in a season, and the most goals for Palace. And um, and he took me on my birthday in October um, of 46. I was just 10. I got a friend of mine gave me this. This is a program from, the, from 1945. Oh, so I've got one from 1936. Have you really? Yeah. <laughs> this is what, I wonder if, because this is what, I love this. It's a 45, so. No, so, so the, just the war just ended. But my favourite bit about this is, a, you might, and it might be aimed at you the year after, is a bit that says to schoolboys, please stop looking through gaps in the fence. <laughs> Come in and watch the game. But I don't know, do you recognise any of these we players? Used to, we used to play six, uh, pay sixpence, go behind the Helmsdale goal. Doors, yeah. Fred Doors, of course, he became a, the, one of the managers he did, later, yeah, didn't yeah. he? Um, who's that? Reese, yeah. Hardrell, I remember him. Did you have a favourite player when you first started? It was Terry Long, a guy that was right half, and he played quite a few hundred games for Palace, and I never saw him play a bad game, and he was my idol. Later on, uh, Steve Kember in the late 50s, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, Johnny Byrne, of course. Yeah. We started off, when you started supporting Palace, we were third division south, yeah. and then we ended up in division, and the four ended division, ended up in division four. four. Yeah. So I just got this image of you, in the Rolling Stones, in the early 60s, in San Tropez, while the others are all having a party, you're on a transistor radio, trying to listen. Uh, did you keep up with the scores when you were touring the world? Yeah, of course I did. I used to phone home and all that, and um, uh, to my dad in Suffolk, or, or, my, or my son, when he was quite young, and, and find out the scores every week. Of course I did. And um, when we were in the, 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 the yeah. cup final run, um, 1990, uh, and when you were playing Liverpool, mm. I was on the phone from the south of France. My son, it cost me a fortune. I was on the phone for the entire game, and my son was commentating on the phone as he was watching the match. And, and I was, yeah, and then the goal would go the other way, oh no, and, and it was amazing. And it, you know, I was on for like nearly two hours, and uh, it cost me a bloody fortune, but it was worth it because we beat Liverpool. And then, but the players... and then of course, I came to the final. Yeah. And I already knew you guys because we used to hang out a bit and with 80s, Andy yeah. Gray and all that. And yeah. We used to go down the clubs, didn't we? That we were down, you'd go <laughs> down tramp and places like that. Um, anyway, um, after the Liverpool game, we went to Amsterdam to rehearse, and um, and then I realised that the cup final was coming up yeah. against United. And I thought I've got to see that, so I called Coppel up and, and got tickets and all that. But I was rehearsing with the Stones. <laughs> So I thought, how can I get out of this? So <laughs> what I did, because we were going on a, a European tour, so, so I, I went to him and I said, I've got, I've got a terrible problem with, my, with my, one of my teeth right at the back, you know, one of my wisdom teeth is killing me. I've got to have something done about it. I've got to go back to London and see the dentist. <laughs> so I did. I drove back with a security guy, a friend, and got there, went to the match with my son, uh, which was fantastic. We almost won it. And then I had to go back, you know, to, I couldn't stay to see the replay. So I had to go back to Amsterdam, and when I got there, they going, you crafty. <laughs> <laughs> they all sussed it. You know what they did afterwards? Right, he gave me his boots from, from the foot cut final, and you gave me a shirt. Okay, Do you um, remember? Yes, what, uh, you, gave, you gave me a, a pro, program, I think. I can't remember what tour it was, well, but all the boys signed, signed, signed it, yeah. yeah. And so All the boys signed his, it. Oh, that's you why you I said, I'll shirt. swap you a shirt for the... Oh, right. I've, they've still got you it. what I got off the cup final? Part of the beer thrown over me by a Man United fan. Oh, no, there you go. It's, 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 I've I've still got I just realised I'm in the wrong world. I'm in totally the wrong world here. <laughs> I've still got to write his boots, and I still think, I still, they've still got a bit of 
mud on them and all that. I, I didn't clean them or anything. I just put them like, just like that in my cupboard in the country. They're still there. But I, I also was friends with Terry Vanables and Malcolm Allison when they came there. And we used to go to clubs with them, you know. Big Mal. And, uh, yeah, Big Mal with that <laughs> hat, that fedora hat he used to have. Well, I mean, he was great, you know, I really liked him. Uh, but they didn't do very well with the club. We kind of went down. <laughs> yeah, but also we came out the first one, went in the second. <laughs> and then down at the perception. Oh, we got more, but the thing is, we got more publicity at the time. We were a glamorous club in the third yeah. division. I mean, at the time, your first game was Oh, what Ipswich. a team it was. You scored yeah. on your debut, didn't you? Yeah, 3-3. Right. Three, three. The crowd was 7,000. Know. The year that you first went to Palace, 1946, we played Ipswich, the crowd was 20,000. So you joined. Oh, no, it's ridiculous. Took, took a, a few off the a, gate, a, did a I? Bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you joined when the club were at a sort of low point. Yeah. But just trying to rebuild. Trying to rebuild, yeah. Steve had a plan yeah. that he wanted um, a young, exuberant team, you know, lots of energy. He wanted to get rid of some of the older players. And he knew what he wanted. He wanted to play this stylish football. And then they kept getting beaten, he kept getting annoyed. And everyone kept saying, oh, you, you play good football, you play good football. And Steve said, right, got to change. I mean, you were quite an angry team. You didn't take any nonsense, did you? No, it was strong. Physical. Mentally, physically strong. Yeah. Demanded a lot of each other. We had some I, I really strong characters in the team. Yeah. I think most people forget that that season Palace went third. Yeah. It was yeah. third in the first division. Yeah. I mean, they were beating everybody. Didn't they and we won that cup. Liverpool, the Zenith Data. Yeah. yeah, we won the Zenith Cup, I call it. And we still didn't go to Europe. Because it was terrible injustice. Terrible. I've, I've, always, I've never forgiven them. <laughs> you, whoever they were. <laughs> My favourite goal of yours, we were 3 and up against Millwall. Oh, oh yeah, back to equalise. I can remember, yeah. And you la almost the last kick top of the game. Corner. Top corner. for the edge, pulled right from the corner above. Yeah. That was just fantastic. And the best bit about it was seeing the Millwall fans scatter. <laughs> Start that to was, go home. That was brilliant. But you ended up playing for Millwall, though, didn't you, in the end? I played four games. Yeah. You tried. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I know, Bill. Listen, played for Charles they were the well. dark days, our Bill. Prime, they were the dark days. Our prime enemies. <laughs> yeah, I know. You Listen, crossed over. I, ju I, did, I just looked at his alone. Out of order. And then I went to play for Charlton. Who would be your favourite player then of sort of recent times? Just thinking that. What, very, very recently? Well, it's, well, you know, well, either of all time or, or recently. I used to love Nigel Martin in goal. I thought he was fantastic. He had the best accent as well, didn't he? And he, he went on, Possibly, didn't he? Yeah, he went on um, Leeds. to Leeds, was it? Yeah. yeah. Were you saying earlier that you were a fan of Bobby Tamling? Bobby Tamling was at um, Chelsea. He was receiving three England caps off um, Roy Hodgson, which he'd lost, and he just spoke really well. Um, you know, he said, listen, I play for both clubs, you know, and yeah. they both gave me a great lifestyle and everything. I'm just grateful. And I don't remember him playing for Palace. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big he's, signing for us. Because Roy Hodgson Roy's started. Hodgson started, started yeah, 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 Roy, yeah, yeah. Roy, was a, Roy was a Palace fan as a little boy. You, you're really friendly with him, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, how yeah. Did, how did that come about? We just met in a restaurant um, in, in about three, three or four years ago. There's a photograph of you in the boardroom without a shirt and tie on. I oh, know, well, that was, yeah, Ron, Ron there's rules knows, and there's rules. Ron <laughs> Nodes always used to tell me off for that as well. He, he used to say, you can come in the, in, the, in the room, but, you know, in the interval and all that, but you've got to have a shirt and tie. I said, I don't wear ties. <laughs> I'm sure one. So he used to hey, say, all right, I'll hey, let you off this time. The modern Palace team, I mean, this is yeah. a really exciting time. I it can't remember a time is. with as much potential. Really yeah. And you're involved directly with the club, yeah. aren't you? So yeah, of course, yeah. An ambassador role. Yeah. And I was team. thrilled to see him there, you know, yeah. after all these years, because we used to hang out. We used to hang out. And time can you remember when I, Can you remember when we went to play cricket? Yeah, you bugger. I picked him up. <laughs> I, 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 picked him. I Where get was him to, was I get him to play cricket because I, I played for the Bunburys for 12 years with Eric Clapton and everybody, you know, David English, and, and lots of uh, other cricketers, celebrities yeah. and all that. So I asked him to come one time. So he comes. He goes in the back. He gets about 65. Yeah. They, oh, that was pay to get me out. <laughs> well, no, can you remember what happened? You ended up in hospital. Yeah, I got smacked up. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm at Gully and one of them Batsman, I don't know, like Robin Smith or someone who used to hit those square cuts like a rocket. You know, he used to go bang, crash, and they hit the bloody. I was in the gully, smack right on my shin. shin. No, you had a massive. It came up like it came up like that <laughs> on my shin. It was you had like, to go to hospital. They had to take me to hospital. So, but I still filled it in the gully. Uh, idiot me. You know, didn't you have to be that belt, did you? Didn't move much. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we were smoking, weren't we? Yeah, you know, you're, I, I didn't want to mention that. In the gully, <laughs> me and, me and Eric, uh, in the gully and the slip. Well, the game's going on. I mean, we used to smoke attention. all the time and put our fags down, oh. so we knew where to stand when you know you came back for the next. <laughs> 2015 is all very well, but I'd rather be back the old than days. You. you had a similar journey though, because like, when you started with the Stones, you'd been playing to 30 people in the pub, and you yeah, were playing yeah, in front of yeah. a couple of hundred at League Town, and then you both ended up playing in front of 100,000 people yeah. at Wembley. I mean, that must be really yeah. surreal. 
Because it happened quite Yeah, my last, my last um, season with the, with the Stones in 1990, was the time of the, yeah. the cup yeah. final. We played Wembley Stadium five times. Wow. Yeah. We went, um, actually. Did you? Yeah. But you've sorted out some tickets for the team. Went. That was generous of me, wasn't it? I know, yeah, it was, <laughs> but actually. And it, it was, you know, it was an amazing night. I bet. Amazing. We're talking of the Stones, but we've got your, your your new album, your brand new album out. Oh yeah, yeah, which is um, coming out in back to base, a couple of which months. Is, I mean, it's the first for a while, but it must be really exciting to have a new album. How's it been going? Yeah, well, I, I, I've been doing so many other things that I forgot about doing solo albums. And then I was just going through some stuff last year, um, listening to some music, and I came across some demos I'd written in, uh, in you know, 30 years ago. I thought, there's not some bad songs here. <laughs> and, um, and so I thought I'd have a go. And, and then I thought to myself, maybe I'm too old, you know? <laughs> and then I thought, well, Blues players play till they drop, and classical musicians, and poets, writers, sculptors, artists, they all carry on till they, so why not? So I, I did it, and I'm getting great feedback, actually. Brilliant. It's, it's quite nice. Is it, it's out in June, is that right? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, second, 22nd of June. And the opening track, which they've kind of chosen, the single is called What and How and If and When and Why. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that might have applied to the palace in the early days when they were in the third division. All of us. <laughs> Thinking what and how and if and when and what, you know, we're not, why are they, when are they going to do it, you know. Not now they're doing it. What and how and if and when and why.